It is not Welch's even, grape juice doesn't count. It's not even American money. <laughs> what? It's all Canadian. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This podcast is live. My name is James Font. With me, I have Silas Whitlock. Hey, what's up? How's it going? People? Sam Shoemaker. Hey, what's up? And we have CJ Pierce, our very special guest. Yodel, yodel. That's the best thing ever. I like it. That I was freaking great. like it. Much appreciated. So this podcast um, is about Snowpiercer. That's true. The movie. It that we all watched like a month ago, and we wanted to do a small review slash conspiracy theory about it. Dun, dun, dun. So, uh, CJ had never heard of it, anything about it. No. What were your Im- first impressions? Just first impressions. First impressions. Did you like it? I really liked the movie. Yeah. I mean, I totally had like zero expectation because... You knew nothing about it. Well, I... I and, and James was like... Or whoever it was, James probably. It was probably me. James was like... Hey, you want to come over and review this movie? And I'm thinking, this movie is going to suck. <laughs> and then it I didn't. like your opinion of me. No, it's and just what I was like, going to show you. It was just like it's like you know, I expected like the like the the third sequel to Benchwarmers or something like that, <laughs> like and, that. or like the third Narnia movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like it's like what are my homeschool friends going to go? Uh, so you enjoyed the movie, yes. for for not having any ex- expectation. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, was, how many times have you seen this movie? I've seen this movie twice. And what did you think about it on your second viewing? It's even better the second time around, honestly. Um, I love the quirkiness of it. The director, like, I don't know. It, all around, it's just a, a fantastic movie. Sam, I, when, how many times have you seen it, Sam? I have seen it, I think, like three or four times now. Did you watch it with other people, or did you watch it by yourself? The first time I watched it, I watched it alone, but then I eventually watched it. Um, All by myself. Yeah. It was pretty great that you first time. And then I probably watched it again by myself by like that day. same night, because I thought it was so good. And then I watched it with So you w- Wait, you watched it twice? I'm pretty sure I watched it twice in the same like viewing. Oh, my goodness. I thought it was so good. In the and same then, like viewing. Honestly, it is that good. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very opinion, good movie. Yeah, well, not in my opinion, just... In general, yeah, it's, it's a great good. movie. Like, it's a great movie. You can watch movie. it two times in a row, and then you just pick up on new things each time. Right, and then I watched it probably once or twice again with uh, with Randy, and then obviously I watched it once with you guys. So yep. I don't know the exact count, but it's it's up there. And then we uh, we also had our friend Alex Yoder uh, watch it with us, and he really enjoyed it. Um, he <laughs> at that time he hadn't watched a movie he said in over a year. That's I feel kind of bad for making him watch a movie then, but at the same time, he was on a roll. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I would love to. I no, I actually really don't care. He spends all his time. He should be watching movies, listening to this podcast, and making way more money than all of us. That's true. That's very very true. That's he is a busy true. man. So, uh, it was the first time I'd ever seen it. Silas had really talked it up, and it delivered. I really enjoyed it. It's a fantastic movie. <laughs> Go watch it right now. Pause yeah, this pause podcast. The podcast. If you have not seen Snowpiercer and you enjoy violent movies, go watch it. I don't, enjoy- care if you, I don't care if you enjoy violent movies or not. I don't care if you're at work or not. Whoever you are, wherever you're at, whatever your political view is, doesn't matter to me. Pause this movie. Watch it right now. I don't care if you're in traffic. Watch the movie. Yeah, just pull it up. Buy it on... on- Google Play or Amazon or wherever you purchase movies online. Buy the DVD because you'll watch it again. If you're Sam Who buys you DVDs? S- buy yeah. the Blu-ray. That's true. Buy the Blu-ray with Sam the DVD. Sam is stuck in 2007. Buy the I'm pirated sorry. version. Buy the VHS. We all know what's going down. Buy the down pirated right. version. <laughs> so the free version. Go on right. Pirate Bay. Like download it. that crap right now. That's right. On McDonald's Wi-Fi. If you like dystopian violent movies with a lot of philosophical concepts... This is the movie for you. Even Anyways, if you don't like those movies. Still. Or if you're a teenage girl and really love Chris Evans. Or if you like good cinematography and storytelling. Anyways, so I really enjoyed the movie. It was a good movie. And it lived up to all the expectation. But what I actually had done previous to it is I actually watched an Everything Wrong With and watched a bunch of things about it before I watched the movie. You did that? I still enjoyed it. What's Can you really? shut What's up? What's freaking wrong with you, James? I can't watch other people's opinions about it. Before you watch the movie, you have to formulate your own opinions first. Yeah, you can't come into something with someone else's opinion. I don't have to do it first. I can do it. I don't care what you're saying right now. You can just shut up. Yeah, you don't have an opinion here. I bet you watch CNN, so I can't. I can't do something the way I want to do it. No, no, no. 
This is America. Because the way you do it is democracy. So the three wrong. of us voted, and we outruled your vote. So, you know so, this nation's so I literally just said I enjoyed something, and then you vote, and then I said I watched other people's opinions before I enjoyed this, and you're giving me yeah, bad about it. Yeah, yeah, you don't do that, James. You don't do that. Actually, you, I do. You no, don't do. You that. spoiled the movie for yourself, and you're kicked off this podcast. Someone unplug his mic and take away his 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 membership belt. We don't know how to edit the podcast. Okay, I you do. Can stay on the podcast. I CJ guess. is now the new James. Hi, James. Woo! Uh, Hi, guys. So his voice. What the frick is that? That is I a think really he was weird. Doing the Silas voice. That's a weird no, no, version it, of it's, like. It's when in James's voice spikes, but I just keep it up there. Anywho, get wrecked. So, <laughs> Sam, what's the concept of the movie? Well, first of all, we'll just say full spoilers. So, if you haven't watched the movie, pause, watch it, come back. We'll still be here. We'll, we'll start where the movie starts. Okay. It sets you up in a world that is completely frozen because the world governments came together to try and stop global warming. And in doing so, they actually blocked the uh, the, the ozone ooze, layer yeah. or something. They, they kind of like blocked the world from the light of the sun, which caused a major, major ice age around the entire globe. And there's one man who foresaw this Named. happening. Uh, Wilfred. Wilbur, Wilford, Wilford. I was thinking Wilbur. Uh, Wilford. Yes. No, he's not the pig from Charlotte's Web. <laughs> <laughs> so Wilford decides to build a train, a self-sufficient train. But he built it as a luxury train, like it was. Yes. A, it was like a five-star hotel train. He built it as a, a luxury item. This is yes. not your standard freight train. This is a really. It's a train high cruise. Tech. It's a train yeah. train. It's a train Again, cruise. I think we can really clarify the clarify the point. I'm sorry. Clarify the point of it by saying that it's a self-sufficient train. Correct. That's insane. It is. And, and it, it travels... also rhymes with train. And there's lots of rain in Spain. Not true. That's snow. That oh. is primarily over the plains. So the train travels around the world once a year. So the train makes a loop around the world, and once a year it passes the same point. That becomes their, like... Their new year. They reach the same, like their starting point once a year. And that's their yeah, happy yeah. new year. So there's different sections of the train. And each section is devoted to... But you don't know that. Right. So, you, okay, I'm sorry. You start off meeting a bunch of characters in a very grungy back part of the train. And you don't really know what's going on. But there's armed guards. And they're counting off the numbers of people in this really gross, grungy part of the train. And they, it, does the movie, doesn't the movie start at where they all sit down? Yeah, yeah, they're they're counting yeah. them as okay, they sit yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, right. As they sit down, they're counting them. And everybody's kind of grungy. <laughs> it looks like 1915 America in the industrial age, like primarily like downtown or not downtown, but like the outskirts of New York, mixed with like the Great Depression. Like, yeah, and a, and a coal mine. There's a bunch yeah. of grungy, grungy people, like all kind of nasty. And then, like fingerless there's... gloves, think of that. That's what it is. Like You're not Phoenix. letting me finish. No, From I don't the want ashes. you to finish. There's a bunch of grungy, disgusting, gross people, and then there's Chris Evans. Ugh. He's, Ugh. Like, he's love me, and he has a I'm perfectly sexy. trimmed beard in this Surprising. grungy garbage place. Anyway, they each gross. So they're all counting off gelatin cubes. Well, you don't know that yet. They're well, all that, counting off. Yeah, they're counting That's off, later. and uh, yeah, that is later. I thought that was towards the beginning, but. Um, it sets the premise for... Why are they counting off again? Sufficiency of the Census. train. You learn this later, but kind of to explain it, because of the self-sufficiency of the train, they have to make sure that the numbers stay constant. Yes. So the back like of the Thanos. train... Yes, kind of like Thanos. He's actually mm-hmm. balancing the train to make sure that... Everybody can live. Everybody can live. There's enough food for everybody. Well, can... Never mind. I'm trying to figure... I'm trying to forget. I'm trying to remember when they take the children. Is that a little later on? That's a little bit later on. They introduce the characters, and then at some point, um, two of the children from the back of the train are taken by a woman who is very nicely dressed, which it contrasts it, harshly. Yeah, it's she's wearing a bright yellow, I believe, yellow yeah, coat. Yeah, yellow overcoat. And everything else is brown and black And gray and, gray's. and gross. Yeah. And so, so she's she clearly can, yeah. higher class. Yeah. And in just in terms of cinematography and color, it's like, they, they, it was very, very harshly uh, con- uh, said contrast a lot, but it's contrasted very well. Where suddenly, what is Chris, th- what is Chris Evans' color? character name? Oh, good question. I bet you I can find it. On Anyways, the so 
I'll look it they, up. They're all sitting down, and the guards are yelling at them and pointing guns at them and telling them to sit down. And I think they sit – Chris Evans and his friend are discussing, like, revolting, but they don't do it then. Yeah, they're he's talking like, about He's, like, not time. yet. And then yeah. – and Edgar I, and Curtis. Edgar and who's Edgar? Edgar, Edgar is, is the, the young guy. guy the yeah, side he's, guy. he's the friend. And Chris Evans plays Curtis. Yeah. Okay. Curtis. Curtis. So and we'll so refer to Curtis. Sorry, we'll refer to Cur- uh, Chris Evans. We're doing this Curtis. really slow. We need to speed it up a little bit. Yeah. It people needs to are go getting a bored. Yep. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Don't fall asleep, people. Keep driving. So they're very unhappy with their conditions, and they realize that they have to get to the front of the train um, to get better provisions and. Basically, to have bargaining power. Freaking equality. Also, uh, in the midst of all of this, it's dinner time, and they are given these blackish brown bars of bars, jello. Bars of jello. Dinner cubes. And the it's, weird, it's one grape of, jello, guys. It's one great. of the weird concepts. That actually Greasy. sounds kind of good. It's Greasy cur- grape jello. I would try that. One of the weirdest concepts is um, Edgar goes, Does this taste bad? He's like, I can't remember if this tastes bad or not. He can't remember what steak tastes like. I think that what was does what steak tastes like. Yeah, here, like, what is they, so this is 17 years after the scientists have released the chemical into the air that reduces the UV rays from right. the sun. That would have that been a good start. Causes point. the ice age that they're currently in right now. And Edgar is 17 years old. And Edgar is 17 years so old. He's so he's never really known the real world. Yes. Yeah. Whereas. Exactly. So Curtis, we should. He's supposed to be seventeen. We should yeah. establish that. That Hollywood sucks. Well, no, James, you and I just can't grow facial hair. Yeah, we so look we, like we're like five. We look that's like right. we're twelve. That's that's how I feel every day. You look older than we do. Anyway, so stop. your voice yeah. is deeper than us. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's true. <laughs> Again, that's true. if we were to that's mimic true. you, it'd be like, "Hey guys, how's it going?" Uh, and if you uh, were to mimic uh, us, which you do, it's like. Hey guys, how's it going? So, hi, I'm Simon. Hey, shut up. Yeah, exactly. Hey, so I'm James, and uh, hey. But yeah. Anyway, so Curtis has spent 17 of his years um, outside the train. He had 17 years just on Earth, normal living. 17 years on the train, and so he kind of knows both worlds. Whereas some Which of the makes people, makes him 34. Yes, it does. Mm-hmm. Whereas Quick some math. people, some people have been born on the train, like Edgar, and they have never really known anything. So, anyways, they get the, they get their bars at dinner time or whatever time this is, and they trade a little boy for his bar specifically. I don't know how it's marked, and they take it to the old guy. What's the old guy's name? Oh, the well, old... it's not it's not Gilly- marked. Gilliam. They go through everybody in the rear end of the Stumpy train knows skins. that there's a specific message. <laughs> but you don't know, you don't know what's going on yet. No, no, you don't know. But so everybody they, they, in the they... train knows what's going on. Yeah. So they go through and they call out for it, essentially. Yeah. And then somebody, the kid, essentially has it. Yeah. And what it so is, they give, yeah. and they and they have to trade him a ball for it. And then he goes to the old guy, Gilliam. Gilliam. Mm-hmm. Who, what did you call him, CJ? Stubby McStumpskins. You don't know that quite <laughs> yet, but yeah, Stubby McStumpskins is a For very part, accurate yeah. name. And so inside the bar is a red strip of paper that says, I think, gosh dang it, Sam, you're supposed to be the most researched Well, person. this would, I'd have to actually rewatch the movie, but essentially each Sorry, cylinder, the podcast right after the movie. Each cylinder has a, a single word. Um, but yeah, it's a little pill-shaped cylinder. It's like yeah. water. Or something yeah, like right. that. Yeah, like one of them water. is water yeah. to take the water section because to take the water section would, would cut off de- the front of the train from getting water. Yeah, it'd actually, be, no, it wouldn't. Essentially, to you own don't know the that water, later. Oh, it, well, yeah. To own the the water section of the train would be to own the entire train. Right, because yeah. effectively it would cut off water supply from yeah. the, from the people of the front of the train. So clearly, they have an informant at the front of the train or some like in the, like first class that's passing them these notes, helping them get their revolt started. Mm -hmm. Um, So eventually what ends up happening is they find out. So eventually they find out uh, some things like the guards don't have bullets anymore in their guns. So the best way that is one of my favorite scenes. in the movie. It's very well shot. It's a freaking awesome scene in the movie. Who wants to to explain it? Chris Evans says they have no bullets and, and to test this theory. Well, and he's being told not to start. He's like, don't try this. You're crazy. He's like, they don't have bullets. So what he does is he runs up, he grabs the barrel of the gun, slams it to his forehead. With his other hand, he grabs the trigger and clicks it. And immediately you realize they have no bullets. He yells it, and 
everybody from the back of the train because charges the guard. It's they're freaking what? an amazing scene. And if you don't get an adrenaline rush from this, you're not a human. And the reason they don't have bullets, they've been on this train for 17 years, and this is not the first revolt. There's yes. That's no. true. That's what was, true. What yeah. was the revolt called? Uh, it was called something. This is a revolt of Curtis or something like that. Like no, no, something no, before, like that. before that. The, there was, the, there's oh, been other remember. revolts. I can't remember exactly. There was the revolt of the seven. That's what it was. Um, yeah. And so they spent a lot of ammo and they didn't have any more. Um, so, because and they, they're on and, a train. And doing this, they yeah. get. For, why do they get those crates or those barrels? They get the barrels because there's several locking doors that no, close. No, 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 no. Why do they get the barrels in the first place? Well, for they sleeping, the for like, it's, it's, like they use them as like babies' cribs and stuff like they that. They have a bunch the of just really random crap that they've kind of salvaged together to make. It literally looks like the Great Depression. Yeah, but everybody it, yeah. in the Great Depression. It, it is looked in like a they were ration car. barrels or and something it's eating, like that. Yeah, yeah. So they Jello. take they take these yeah, old exa- barrels. You're exactly right, CJ. It looks like ration barrels. Right. They yeah. take these barrels. They tie them all together. And so another that it's like quick, a big pipe. And another quick important thing is that he gets the coal. Right, so there's uh, industrial waste known as chronal, which uh, is both flammable and a hallucinogen, so it's a drug, and that's just important for later because... So it's basically meth. Yes. Actually, flammable yeah, you're, you're right. Um, it's, it's like meth Play-Doh. Yeah, so they... <laughs> it looks like... But it also looks like... Sorry, Sam. No, you're fine. It looks like the stuff that like your grandma gets to like make a little fake plantation. Oh, like, yeah, little, little, yeah. Like a... Uh, like the stuff that they put flowers into. Yeah, for yeah exactly. It's like the stuff that all the hipsters are like crushing, like wet or dry yeah. or frozen. Yeah. It looks like that, but it's Kronos and people sniff it in the movie. Yeah. So basically, they use these pipes to, to force all the doors open at once. While all the doors open, they run this. Because the doors are only for like 10 seconds. Right. So they like run that. all these pipes in, they jam all the doors, and they start and moving up through the forward sections and we'll, this is right after the, they they say they have no bullets and so they keep running through and yeah they're, they're over- killing guards as they're going they've yeah. overpowered the guards and they go but through. to keep the doors open they have to keep this pipe here right yes basically to keep to access. keep the back section of the plant the train open to all the rest of them because it's just these like four gates that separate them which and the, equalizes everybody and the yes. the red paper actually said someone's name did it yeah because they had to find that guy in the Prison section. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's yeah, right. That's yeah, right. yeah, that's right. yeah. Right. So they get to the tr- they get all the way up to the prison section, and they release a man who was the designer for the doors on the train. So they, uh, he's a drug addict. So they pay him in the chronal, and uh, have him. They give him one piece of chronal for every door he unlocks. Yep. And he brings along his daughter, who was also held captive, and is also a drug addict, and is also a drug addict, and she's only seventeen years old. Right. At least, at, so at actually, the I think Edgar is a little bit older because he's tasted steak, but I think she is the one that was born on the train because no. she's 17 and Edgar, I think, is a little bit older. Remember Edgar, though, because we learned a little thing later. No, about you're Edgar. right. You yeah. are right. Yeah. So we'll mention that later. So that line about steak Who is a little dies first out of the main characters. Ed- I want to say that it would be. Be Edgar. Edgar, because the movie sucks, and the fact that they, they form so they, they form a posse of people that you really enjoy watching. Obviously, they re- they the cast is very charismatic. Cast. They yep. just they work so well together because they've been they've been deprived of their livelihood together. So they all want this. They're not. I'm all better the actors, than you. All the actors were actually put inside a train car and locked in there for a week. Yes. Actually, for, actually, That's for the awesome. entire time, like the actors yes. actually thought this was real, right? And this was oh an actual God. scenario, which is why they just work so well together because they thought like they were literally killing people. Yes, all the bullets yeah. were fake, and obviously they didn't we're know. missing small details in the movie that that you're not getting right now. So seriously, when we say go watch the movie, we we really mean that. Go watch the movie because there's no way that. Anyways, so after they, they bribe, <laughs> we're gonna get this after they bribe the guy. Um, to open the doors for them, they go. What's the next car? Because they, the the they, they get to the they get to the prison section. Car? I want to say also there's a guy who does cool parkour and kills a really big guy. Oh yeah, that's yes, cool. that's super yes. cool. Um, they what? they find out that the they get to the next one, which is the food car, and they yeah. find out that all the gelatin they, and they, cubes they, they, they've they find been eating. A, they find a friend of theirs who got moved up to the food car to make their food. Right, and inside this. 
big real quick and they start bowl every there's a conveyor belt of all their their food and they just start scarfing it down because they only get a certain amount so they start eating this because it's still warm and it's still mm. warm and so chris evans gets into the vat which is full of he doesn't get into it he looks into it it's full of dead li- bugs i mean live Loc- bugs locusts or grass, thunder, grasshoppers or something like they're just getting churned up and gross. minced into yeah. a it just like disgusting. a freaking gelatinous it's almost like a like so chris evans yells stop eating the stuff it's like a sour patch kids but without the sour part or the sweet part it's just gug or like Bug it's guts. just kids don't. And at this point, yeah. he finds the next cylinder, which then I think that's where it says water. Yeah, which is stinking amazing how he yes. found that cylinder. But okay, right, of course, we won't talk about that. I mean, there are some plot Movie convenience magic. aspects to this, but they're not super far fetched. Astronomical, right? So, mm-hmm. um, just to move things along, they're moving forward, and. What happens is they encounter a train full of henchmen with axes. Is that next or is the, the train car? Yes, you are I correct. I think yeah. that's... I because, can... No, you're right because it's right before the water. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. it's in between so the they, food station they open and the, the They station. open the gate and then the daughter of the, the guy who works on the doors, what's his name? Uh, his name is Namun. So the daughter of Namun uh, can sense things. And so right when they're unlocking the door, she says, she like, don't screams, open it. Don't open it. Well, it opens. Bad idea. It opens. <laughs> and there yes. it is literally wall to wall guys in masks with axes. It, it looks like a coats. bad trench. BDSM yeah. video. Hey, guys. When I Just being on, honest. Tied up. And, and so submissive. there's there's some uh, some looking at each other. The and two some, groups of people. Some cutting of fishes with axes. And then yeah. yeah. Th- there's, that, that's a, super there's a weird. fish there's a fish cutting ceremony. And then they just go at it. And it's it's really And mind you, the people that are coming up from the end, like the very last car at the train, have zero weapons whatsoever. Except for maybe like a few clubs. Yeah, they, except they, for a few clubs. And people start running from and the And these back. people straight up have like Another important thing is matches. Sog axes that they use against these people. So everybody has an axe on the other side. Just but, saying. Yeah. Another important thing is uh, the... What's his name? He has matches and he only has two cigarettes left. Oh, so, so Namu has... Uh, yeah, he has the last two cigarettes in and existence. Like four matches. And like four matches in a little matchbook. And at that scene, one of the remaining children grabs... Um, the matchbook grabs the matchbook and runs to the back of the train. Uh, this so comes in later. This comes in almost immediately later. They're uh, fighting in this train car against these guys with axes, and they start winning until until there's a suddenly <laughs> everybody stops fighting and well the lady co- doesn't there's, there's, yeah, there, the yeah, there's, a, there's an win. announcer that comes in and says stop fighting stop fighting everyone happy new year because they just cro- crossed this. Uh, this the bridge, deadline. the deadline for going around the world in one year. So everyone goes, oh, happy new year. Even the guys with the axes. The yeah, guys which with is axes weird because like, you get like that scene where Chris Evans is sitting, like laying next to this other dude that's wearing this mask. He like looks over at the guy in the mask, looks over at him and just smiles at him as like, happy new years. And yeah. then like all of three seconds later, you just see like Chris Evans like just impaling him with something like an yeah, axe. Yeah, like they go at it again with axes. With an axe. Yeah. It's, yeah. So... What what the secret is that the people from the tail section of the train don't know is that there's windows. There's yeah. well, yeah, there's windows in this section of the train, which which you take for granted as a, as a person that doesn't live in a train. And then all the lights in the train go out, and the st- the windows still light it. The men with axes put on night vision, which which we don't know where they get from because right pockets pockets obviously. But they're also on a self-sufficient train, right? So, why so, clear, they, so clearly why they, they had a they, they had a train car specifically designated to men with axes with night vision. Think of like okay, so like there's barely enough room to do push-ups. Like, how do they keep them fit? I don't know. That's they just a, push each other. It's hard to explain. It's hard to explain certain things like hot. this. <laughs> but, but anyways. I didn't mean for it to be erotic. I just meant for it to be just funny. Well, you did set up the scene by saying it looked like a bad BDSM scene. So okay, well I retract that. Anyway, Sam, it just looked it just looked wrong. There we go. We'll say yeah. that it looked wrong. Rawr. Right after the New Year's bridge, there, there is. is a tunnel, and it's the longest tunnel on the entire track. 
So basically, the lights go out in the cabin, and it's dark. And the, pitch obviously, black, and it's horrifying. There's just it, a section of movie where it's night vi- from the perspective of night vision goggles as they like. <laughs> There's all these people that are like huddled together. Oh, the, like wor- the worst part in the is dark. the worst part is they start attacking each other. Yeah, because oh, they yeah. think they think that it's the the axe murderer people. Um, but then they remember the matches and they start lighting torches and suddenly they get- guys. Real quick, we skipped over a great part of the movie. There's a guy who's a transgressor, and what happened to him? Oh yeah. Well, Wait. we want that for something that people see in the movie. There's a guy who does a. But he throws a shoe at a oh, lady. Oh, that's right. And uh, the punishment is not good. No, it's not no. good at all. Bad. Anyways, she does this whole thing. So go the watch train. the movie to see what the punishment is because we know that you're curious because I'm curious now and I've seen the movie. Anyways, right. So so after that, they they start passing the torch up to yeah, the, to and the then front. they start lighting multiple torches and they light the whole train car up with the torches, which over like. Blows out the night vision goggles because they, they can't start see winning it all. again. And they start winning again. And in the battle that ensues, um, Edgar is captured and he gets killed, unfortunately. Well, he gets captured and it gives Curtis a because there's a Hitler Hitler esque lady that te- that tells everybody what to do, and Curtis has the choice of chasing her down or saving Edgar. And does Edgar say? Edgar kind of gives him that nod of like, you know what you got to do, bro. You know what you do, bro. It's all I'm good. Get totally it's all stabbed. good. And he tries to break away, but he gets caught and stabbed. But they catch the Hitler lady, and uh, should have kicked her freaking British teeth in. And the guy that stabbed she him gets, have her, any teeth. gets killed, so it's You're okay. Gonna, oh, you don't find that out till later, but it's funny. But anyways, so um, they capture her and uh, use her as leverage. Obviously, they have a lot of deaths, unfortunately, but. They decide, like, okay, we're going to mourn them and we're going to send some people back to stay in the back of the train to protect what they've already captured. And then the rest are going to go forward. Um, so it's who is it? It's Curtis. It's Curtis. And it's like the ninja guy. It's Namgoon, the guy with the doors and his daughter. Um, and the guy that was the guy that uh, committed the crime i suppose yeah earlier in the film and was punished uh that might be it oh and there's might... the woman the oh, woman yeah, the, one the woman, woman whose child was taken at the beginning of the movie yeah. and and the weird thing real quick we, sam talked about the contrasting between color and stuff there were many she said send all the children up and all the children were sent up and she measured each one of them and you don't know why yeah oh and also just so we can touch on things that those torches that he was talking about a second ago used up the last of the matches. Yeah. The last. Supposedly. Presumably. Yes. And they stayed at the, the matchbox stayed at the back of the train. Supposedly. Supposedly. It's a weird. It's a, a. Yeah. We'll get to that. And I'll, I'll try to speed things up here because I know like to go through every individual crank car and the entire plot of the movie would be. it. Go watch the movie. It's a super good movie. Should. So just just trek along. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to speed it up. They go through multiple different cars and unfortunately There's so as many go, amazing scenes in yeah, this movie. Each each car is like a mini set to a movie. And yeah. so there's there's a preschool, there's a dining car, there's like a with dentist a decker, like, there's, there's, like dentist yeah, there's cars um and then there's like a spa car. And it's really cool. The, they're just different settings. And uh, so along the way, unfortunately, um, you end up losing the ninja guy. You end up losing the child's mother. She dies. There's a really cool scene um, where they shoot across through window two windows because yeah. there's a there's, a, shoot, cur- they there's shoot, a curve in the track. Yeah. The train is so each other. long. Well, did you? It goes around a curve and it makes a big so. U shape, and they're shooting across e- to each other. Yeah, did you from talk about that individual U. character? No. Oh right, so there's that character is important for the next step of this podcast. Honestly, true priest there's, guy. There, yeah, there's these two characters that are introduced in the beginning. They're very silent, but it's implied that they are in a relationship. There's these two big bulky guys in suits, um, and in the axe murderer train car, the one is killed um, in the ensuing chaos. When he lunges at someone, he lunges at the at the the techni- the dork technician's daughter, and she flips a spear up, and he gets impaled, and he dies. Um, 
So that kind of causes the other guy to go on a vendetta to hunt them down. And he is the one shooting across the train when it gets into this big U shape. It's a really cool scene, but just in concept. I like it. In concept. Would it work in real life? No. Probably not. Good? But no. you don't see that in a lot of movies. Like it just it makes Oh no, but it's again, a cool sci fi scene. That whole scene leads up to our next freaking part of the podcast. It does. We'll oh, get right. We'll get what, to it. what he, who he is. Yes, exactly. Who, who he is yeah. and who other people might and also be. And why he'd be able to make that shot. Right. So, I forgot about that, but thank you, Silas. So, oh, surprise, there's ammo now. Right. Yeah, so, for real. So, the confusion oh, yeah, comes. That was, that was another thing in the, in the Proust. That was another thing in the preschool car. Uh, they are passing out eggs, hard boiled eggs for to the all new the children. For the, for the new, new year. year. And. They go all the way to the back of the train, and someone, one of the people in the back of the train said, eggs, I thought these were extinct. And then the creepy, 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 creepy bald guy goes, you know what else is extinct? extinct. And then he whips out a no, gun and starts no, he shooting says, people. He says, you know what else? We, uh, there's many things in this train that people thought were extinct. Uh, oh, what else? Huh, this. And then the teacher lady of the preschool whips out a gun, and she gets shot because she's a psychopath. After she sings this but dude, really super honestly, creepy song. she does that part so we're good. Oh, she's a fantastic like, actress. She's a fantastic actress for that scene. Sam is singing her song exactly perfect. She so, does a really, she does an amazing job for that scene. As There's, being a creepy school teacher. Yeah. But anyways, so bullets are not extinct. And um, both parties now have guns. Or at least they have one gun. The yeah. tail section group has one gun. But anyways. Yeah. So they keep moving their way up the right. train. And unfortunately, along the way, like I said, they lose everyone except for Chris Evans, Curtis, and then the uh, the door technician and his daughter. And they end up going through this like super drug addict section of the car. It's like the last section of the car. And in it, the door guy starts collecting all this chronal that these front section people and they have think been, he's just being a drug addict. right like they, they think he's like oh look all these drugs i'm gonna get all the drugs yeah but what he's actually doing is he's building a bomb because it's highly explosive and they get they get to the very they get to the engine compartment the very front of the train right let me right before the engine i should say there, yeah there's a big door and that the, cuts off two the doors. engine there's the, there's there's the engine compartment where you get into the engine and then there's a side door to get out of the train right and he's planning on blowing open one of those doors. So then Curtis gets invited into the front of the Real train. Quick. The engine at the there's, train. There's a couple. There's two things. There's a couple things before this that we need to discuss. I always forget these things. Um, Little details. The door technician wants to blow a door. Wants to blow the door open to go to the outside of the train. He said, "We can jump off. We can wait till this certain point. And we can jump out." Right. Chris Evans is like, "No, you'll die." Because um, in the preschool scene, they talk about the four people who escaped from the train. Seven people. Seven, seven people. people. And they ended up freezing to death. They froze to death before they got very far away. They look like little statues in the and snow. And then the, the Asian guy said, when I when I was in the front of the train or when, it, when, I, when, when I, he yeah. was working on the doors and stuff, he saw a plane, a plane crash. And all that was visible was a part of the wing. Mm -hmm. And as the years went on, more of the plane has been exposed, meaning that global I, warming is real. Yep, the global warming is coming back. That's right, it's back, Round baby. Round two, everybody. And the other thing is that, um, and so he wants to leave the plane because he thinks the Earth is habitable. Right. And one of the ladies, the there was a lady that he knew that was part of the seven that froze outside, who was an Eskimo, and she understood the types of the different types of snow, and she taught him all of that. So when he saw some of the snow, he recognized. The type of it. So he, he believed that it was survivable outside. Um, so then the door opens to the engine compartment of the train. And, and the lady in the... The lady in yellow steps out and bang! Shoots the door guy. But and, does not shoot Curtis for some reason. And I think the daughter at this point is unconscious. She's unconscious. She's drugged out of her mind. Yeah. So she takes Curtis into the engine compartment. And she takes the C4-esque thing off the... Yeah, she, she takes leave it? she takes the bomb. She takes, yeah, she the, takes the bomb. The explosive bomb thing made out of drugs. And this is where we meet Wilford. 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 Um, Freaking Wilford. And then it is revealed that all of this 
was a way, a massive way, to and balance. And Stumpy McStump Pants was in on it. Well, that I was going to say this is a massive way Sorry. to balance the train. This is going to balance the ecosystem of the train because, and yes, because Stumpy one, McStumpy Pants was in on it. And but the thing is, one of one of the scenes that you don't understand quite. Um, when they're fighting the axe people, they're like, exactly 74 of you will die. Or, or 70, exactly 74% of you will die. 74% of you will Which die. Which, again, brings me into the Thanos thing where it's just about balance. Right. And because so you can't, what you can't sustain a million people on a tiny train. No, you nope. can't. Right. And so Also, it, where the heck are they getting steak? Because they have sushi and they have steak. Sushi makes sense because they have like an aquarium thing. Where are they getting steak? Well, well you see them walk yeah, through that. They, go they walk through, through like, like a, yeah. a But where locker. are they raising these cows? Wherever they freaking want to, maybe there's a section behind or above, yeah, true. the station where no, because of the tunnel. Well, I mean, it's just from the perspective of the people in the tunnel, so they maybe That's they true. see it from like maybe Anyways, they, Sam. yeah, yeah. So, so they they get so that so a good they point. Freeze dried cows. That could be it. Could be honestly. It. Could they be anything. Cows. I would have loved them to show like a diagram of the train where there's different, you know, like animal raising groups. Or but if anyway. you could buy it, that'd be sick. Like yeah. a picture of it. Yeah, I, l- oh, I like actually want like mount a, that a on your wall. A Dude, that'd be awesome. It goes all the way around. That'd be so cool. It's like the Millennium Falcon blueprints. Anyways, but it's so, way yeah. cooler. So they meet Wilford, and he begins to unravel the the story of the train where. They orchestrated the revolt to thin out the tail section people, and they were meant to stop the revolt at the uh, the tunnel where it went black and everything, and they were going to kill off a certain number of the tail section people so that there would be more balance to the train. And then they'd go back, and you know it would seem like they had made some success in their revolt, and they'd get better food rations and everything. There'd be more food to go around because there'd be fewer people. Um. You know, playing God. Right. But because they came back with those torches, it was kind of an unexpected curveball for and the front section. too many people, too many front sectioners died. So there yes. is a... Punishment? Punishment for, what's his name? Stumpy McStumpy Right. Pants. They, they end up killing Stumpy McStumpy Pants and then executing all but, I think, 18? Yeah, they execute a bunch of people. They the kill a section. bunch of the back section people, except for 18, it's because real, it's the 18th it's real, anniversary of the train. It's a real sad, depressing part of the movie where you feel, wow, there is no hope for humanity. You you lose all of the characters you love. You feel Everybody. very sad, except for Chris Evans. Right. Chris Evans, because his $27 million um, dollars an- matters. Yes. Yeah, for real. <laughs> so the next part that we skipped over was... Chris Evans is talking to the door engineer about what life was like. What are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> I'm just oh my gosh. He is. Have some more death wish, man. So he's talking to the door technician about what life was like before they had the chopped up beetles. I eat babies. And it was about he oh my gosh. And, <laughs> and Chris Evans was saying, I know what babies I know that babies taste the best. And what what it turns out is that <laughs> when this train first started, they were so low on food they were eating each other. And, and then they, and then and so Stumpy the sto- McStumpy Pants. This Stubby McStubby Pants, the story that Chris Evans tells is there are these two guys and they did they kill the woman? Or they knock killed, her? They yeah, killed they the woman. Killed the they killed the woman, and they take the, the baby. They're about to kill the baby, and the, this random this guy comes up and says and cuts off his arm. Which I don't know how you do that. And like, hey guys, saw, saw, 127 saw, hours. Saw, 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 saw. Hang on, don't was, kill that baby. I think it was saw, more saw, so saw, saw, like saw, saw, if you're gonna eat anything, and then he began to saw off his arm. Eat me. Anyway, so he he sawed off his arm and said, "Eat this" instead of the baby, and the baby grew up to be Edgar. And the dun, me- dun, dun, dun. the men trying to eat the baby was Chris and some other dude named Steve. And then Stumpy McStump Pants was Stumpy McStump Pants. Right. And in that moment, Curtis felt an extreme amount of guilt because he had gone to those links and he never ended up cutting off he, any of his and, limbs. And they discuss it earlier on the movie and they show a scar on his arm where he tried to cut off his arm to give it to someone who was hungry, but he couldn't do it. That's right. I forgot about that. So, so I've decided oof. if I ever meet Chris Evans, I'm going to be like, 
So what do babies taste like? Oh, oh my gosh. No. <laughs> Please don't. Hey, Captain America, what do babies taste like? That's one of those things where it's like, if you get a response back from him, he's like, one thing you just you just don't want to know. <laughs> Delicious pork. Anyways, pork. so what's actually worse is that he says babies taste best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super creepy. Honestly, yeah. I, the thing is that so Wilford is offering Curtis the chance to be the new Wilford, right? Basically, the, to the, run the train. Yeah, the engineer because of the train. he's the strongest, and he's the only one to make it there. Which is his like? New... I don't know about the only one, but one of the right. Only. It's hey, his Captain new... America, you want to be God? <laughs> <laughs> well, heck yeah, I do. Freaking yeah, man. But basically, yeah, like that's his. I got the body his, for it. He and, realizes and that he's almost gonna do it, or some. He's a... he is in the moment, like he is presented with all of this power, and he realizes like this. The, he's kind of like swayed by the temptation, but, but then, then the the. The train opens up. No, 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 no. The train does not oh. open up yet. The Asian girl comes in. Right. Oh. The and Asian they, girl who has some sort of uh, sixth sense. She's a clairvoyant. Yeah, clairvoyance. Thank she you. has a third eye. She hasn't been drinking the fluoride, making the frogs gay. Okay, Alex Jones. Sam, shut up and stop. That is my monk chant. Um, so <laughs> she realize, she like starts clawing at the floor. Chris runs down, opens up the floorboard, and inside is the child. Is the child taken. that was taken by the yellow coated lady, and uh, he's working on stuff, pulling grease. Oh, that yeah. was such a good scene. Yeah, he's he's inside of the train, cleaning out a, a certain part of it because, as um, Wilford says, that part recently went extinct, which will tie into the conspiracy later. But primarily, so he's good. just saying like. You know, you're on a train going around the world. Eventually, things wear out, and eventually, you're out of the things that you need to keep it running. Something that's really weird, though, too, about that scene is the fact that, like, the creepy Hitler lady, like, with the, did that thing with the thing the kid with was her doing hand. with her yeah. hand with a shoe. Each and then, pot has its own particular preordained position. Yeah, and the Wilf yeah, did the same really. thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So they, they understand like the concept of They've been brainwashing. Yeah. Although she with did the that fluoride. she did that before the the child ever made it to the front of the train. Yeah. So, it's kind yeah. Of, yeah. It was so weird. they knew yeah. what it was the preordained. Was for. There's yeah. yeah, there's like this spiritual essence to the train. Anyway, so that's But when I mean Chris, it was just one of those things where like that's when Chris where Evans Wilford snapped. explains that like parts have gone extinct and so they need replacements. Remember that for later. And uh, so Chris Evans shoves his arm in the in a gear shaft to stop it so he can pull the child out. Yep. And then another child comes out because the train stops working correctly. Right. And goes into a weird little compartment and disappears. You never see him again. He dies. Um, Presumably. He, I guess he, so, yeah. He tries to we stop You never assume, see him again. We assume he dies. Yeah. And I think then, he also sacrifices his arm. Because he sees how courageous Chris Evans is. Yeah. Goes, so, okay. so Chris Evans gets his arm... <laughs> Chris Evans song. reaches down, pulls the boy out, and in and that he process, makes that, he makes that sacrifice of cutting off his yeah. arm for someone else. Yeah, it, the, eventually the gear shaft rips his arm into, which is a very but there's a table leg literally right behind him that pivotal. could have shoved in there. But that was yeah. just my logic. Yeah, I understand that logic, but at the same time, it made a very well, emotional. That's uh, the thing. Story. Where he did that not because bones are stronger than wood, because that was a correct sentence. Well, he also did that not because it's like. It's the e- he didn't do that because it was the easy sacrifice. He did that because it was the sacrifice he wanted to make for his people. Yeah. So yeah. he's selfish. So, so he has the child. I um, want to lose my he arm. Wanted, he wanted to prove that a good leader is willing to make the sacrifice. And I think and, he did a good job at that. And in the moment to save the it child, was it pain. wasn't thinking about like, grab the little table leg and bring it over here. It was more like, I need to do this now. And I'm willing to sacrifice my arm for it. Yeah. Like, and he, in the immediate he, he moment. He had been moment. wanting to, but yeah, right. it was, it and was, it, my arm is worth less than what this child's life right. is. Right. And, and so, so it was a cool message. And so eventually what it culminates to is, um, what, how does Wilfred, no, I, Wilfred, Wilfred stays in there and then I think he gets knocked out. And the guy from earlier who's shooting at them finally catches up to him. Right. And the, uh, the door guy who was shot. He gets back up. He was only mortally wounded. I mean, so he's still alive. He's only mortally wounded. They stick the bomb on the wall again, and somehow that lady dies. 
That she gets per- blown up by it. So the yellow coated lady gets blown up. The guy with the gun gets. How blown did up. they? Did, did it have a fuse? Yeah, it had a few. And so, they used the matches. So he pulled the matches out of his wait, pocket. Wait, 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 wait. Worse than that, before they ever got into the engine, they smoked the last cigarette with yeah, a man. match. And then they used the last match, not just that match, but another match to light the fuse. So there so was. we don't know two. what the continuity crew the continu- So they used crew was three matches and maybe. they only had two. Okay, so maybe he had two packs of matches on him. Maybe because he only said that the cigarettes were going extinct, but the matches maybe he had more than one. What? Okay, here's my question. There was That's one true. match That's left in the match box. What the match? His match. Oh crap! Slade, there's one one match left. Why would anybody open have two books of matches? Anyways, in a world where they're super rare to find, he would probably be scrounging around and saving them, anything true. that he could find. Both very good points. I just want to point that out. Very good points. I think those are flaws in the director's point. Anyways, so... Boom! The train blows up. Or the wall of the train blows up. Which causes an avalanche. It causes an avalanche. So the train was doing bad already, but then the avalanche just pushes the train off of a cliff, basically. And the movie ends with... The daughter and the little boy being the only survivors with heavy overcoats that you can see. That because, you can see. And when they when they were collecting the uh, the stuff to make the bomb, they also grabbed some heavy coats because yep. they knew that they were going to bust yep. out. And so they end up leaving the train, stepping out into the snow, not freezing to death. And in the distance, they see a polar bear with and its he, cubs. He hands them a Coke Zero. That's right. He says, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Happy New Year. Yeah, it, and that's where it ends. Yeah, but and you and then you start thinking about it. And you go, I don't want to think about that anymore. But again, you never know. Maybe people survived in buildings, and maybe people survived underground because there's all those like crazy prepper people who are like, I'm gonna build a box in the ground. I'm Sam, if he it. had money. So, you just watched Snowpiercer, and you listen to us describe Snowpiercer. Congratulations! Terribly. Congratulations! You wasted Great your life. So, right after that, look up Snowpiercer. Willy Wonka. And there's a 14 minute and 48 second video by Rhino Stew. It wi- will change your life in your perspective on this movie. And it Come says, Why Snowpiercer is a sequel to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And honestly, he says, okay, so at one point he says, This is a stretch. It's not a stretch. No, nope, it not makes at all. perfect factual sense. It really does. And I wouldn't be surprised if this director actually planned it that way. Yes, for real. Which, it takes a very creative mind to take a child's movie and turn it into an R-rated dystopian future that only, quote-unquote, loosely connects, but really makes no, perfect sense. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to argue that. I'm going to say it tightly connects it. It is, but not, but not in on fact, a, surface... a sequel. Even if he didn't mean for it to be a sequel, it is, in fact, But it's a not a surface-level sequel where it's like, oh, you're going into it thinking, oh, this is totally the sequel to Willy Wonka. But I, yeah. it ties together. Yes, no, it, it, it perfectly but ties together. But it's not it really obvious. Does. It's not like you're going into it thinking that this is Willy Wonka 2. Yes. Or Willy... That's true. <laughs> I, will, I agree with that. Fallout Willy Wonka. But if you watch this movie, so you have to watch this movie, then you watch this conspiracy video next. Yeah, right and away. It, right and it away. Makes, it makes more sense than the JFK. It makes mer- more sense than UFOs. It makes the most sense of all conspiracy theories of all time. It is the only true conspiracy The theory. only true one. And that's true. One. That That is true. Points. CJ. Yes. That's true. Just points on it. Oh, points in the the, yeah. the conspiracy. Okay, so we start out, and he's like, this is a conspiracy theory. And you're like, okay, you don't believe it. And then he starts naming off things, connecting characters, like, you know, gag suit dude, because he's, you know, what, what's the kid's? The, Mike what, TV. Mike TV. They, the they kid say that he's does Mike all the TV, shooting. and then he's like, starts shooting at Chris Evans across the train, and He's got a really good shot, and then it cuts to a scene of from Willy Wonka, and he's like, "I can't wait until I'm grown up so I can shoot a real one of these and all these he's things." Because he's playing all the violent because video he's playing games. Playing all the violent video games. Yes. Mothers don't let your children play violent video games. No, turn I, into I, gay I, serial killers. Oh my gosh! 
science backs this up. It does. That's actually true. James. But at the same time, let them have that release, people. Okay? Being gay serial killer? No! <laughs> Freaking no! No. Let them have yes, a if your release. child is a is a <laughs> not gay, the gay serial release. If your child is a gay serial killer, <laughs> dang it, you you need to give them it, CJ. the freedom to do so because in this world, children need the creativity and the outlet to become whatever they want to be. So if your children want to be a homosexual serial killer, no, okay. that's not what we permit here. You know what? We're open to all sexualities. They can be straight serial killers. <laughs> Pan serial I'm killers. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm done. This has been. This podcast is lava. Don't listen to me. Furry serial killers. No! They can be non binary serial killers. But really, it makes a lot of sense. It does. It makes a lot of sense. Um, the, other, the other possibilities were. Um, I think it was the, the really proud girl who wanted everything her way. And she was always asking her dad for like, oh, I want a pony. I want this. And she ended up going down the trash suit. And they they theorized that that is the uh, the woman in the movie who is kind of like the overseer, yeah. if you will. Hitler with the shoe? Yep. Yeah. Um, Hitler oh with a shoe. Gosh. And then. Every piece has its preordained position. Yeah, it's preordained. Particular position. Um, and then, you know who Wilbur might be? Wilford, not Wil- Wilbur. Wilbur. Uh, Wilford. Wilford. Well, what do you think? In the movie, his train is always emblazoned with this big W. w. And what, 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 whose name starts with a W? Willy, Willy Wonka. Wonka. But not really. Not really Willy Wonka, but his successor. Charlie Buckets. Charlie. And... If you think about how much he would have looked up to Willy Wonka, maybe he he changed his name along the way to Wilford Wonka W, and then he puts the W on his train. Yes, because, I mean, it would make a lot of sense. There's so many points that we're not actually going to be able to hit on. Oh, cause... oh, oh, wait, but though there's one, there's one big one. Right. Well, I was just going to say, yeah. there's so many points that we're not going to be able to hit on, so like you definitely need to watch... Snowpiercer, and then go watch the the conspiracy on YouTube just to get like or, the full or picture. Don't even don't even watch Snow Snowpiercer. Just skip to the conspiracy. Right. Just watch that, and then and Honestly, then watch yeah. Snowpiercer or watch. Well, I would say watch Snowpiercer first, and then watch the conspiracy theory video. Yeah. Though I I almost I almost wish I would have watched the movie thinking it was a a sequel to Willy Wonka because everything would have made so much more sense. Oh, that's true. Here's what you do. Okay. Here's what you do. You take a weekend, right? You okay. watch Snowpiercer. You go to YouTube. You watch The Conspiracy. You go back to watch Snowpiercer. No, no, you get really drunk, so you forget everything, and so then you, you go back daddy. and watch. And then it's like you're watching it for the first, first time. time. Yeah. Perfect. Or get really high. I'm Ooh. told both work. Never Smoke tried either one. We do not contone drugs or alcohol. Or alcohol no substance abuse podcast. of any kind. No, no substance so abuse. We'll put that out there. But... CJ, you were talking about the major, the major uh, point of this conspiracy. Yes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask James a question. So James, when, uh, what, what was that part that went extinct according to the conspiracy theory? Oompa loompas. Oompa loompa doompa dee doo. If you are wise enough, listen to this podcast is lava. That that works. That, that works really well. That was yeah. a good plug, I think. Plug. That was a terrible plug. Please edit my specific voice channel Ooh. out of Loompa, that. <laughs> Loompa, Snow Piercer is a sequel to you. Holy that, that crap, works. that works. That works. <laughs> that works. <laughs> yeah, so the little kids who were brought from the tail section of the train were put into little places where they were able to fit very suspiciously well. And what? Is the same size it's as a child, like CJ. An Oompa Loompa. And Silas, what is an Oompa Loompa? I don't Oompa. remember. I haven't watched Johnny Depp's it's version a of Charlie and Chocolate Factory in years, You don't man. want Johnny Depp's version? That's garbage. Well, that's the version that they explain no, what they Oompa don't. Loompas are. Yeah, it is. They explain what Oompa Loompa, like where Oompa Loompas come that's from and right. why they brought in, them in. Yeah. In Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, not... 
Willy Wonka and the Charlie Effect, the whatever in the Charlie Factory, in uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the Johnny Depp one. They explain. I understand that. But they explain, they explain why they, they bring him in. It's yeah, like from like the Amazon jungle. Yeah, from it's from, uh, from Lumpaland. So like, just Lumpa disregard Land. that. Okay, I'm just gonna put this out there for our listeners. Watch the Gene Wilder version of Willy Wonka and Way the better. Chocolate Factory because that is the only good version. I mean, if you want to watch like a quirky version, sure, go ahead. Watch. If you're into really watch. dark stuff, yeah, yeah. If if you just like like Johnny Depp and don't like anybody else. Then watch freaking John, Johnny Depp's version was just trash. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It, I mean, it had good aspects of it, and it brought like the weirdness into like a modern but, time. But like, I've watched middle school plays version of that that may have been better. Oh gosh. Okay, well, I mean, still watch it because yeah. I mean, I enjoyed Johnny Depp's version of it. I yeah, I mean, it was it was a good really movie. Wonka. It was it was guys were rambling. And we are. But anyways, so Oompa Loompas power the train, and they died. They died because... They went... There were be, no women. Because either there were no women, or their lifespan was different, or they couldn't live in the train climate. They explain in the video. And there's no chocolate. Okay. This podcast has, I think, been lava. Be sure to watch Snowpiercer. Be sure to watch the YouTube channel uh, video about the conspiracy. And on top of that... Be sure to just tune in to This Podcast is Lava here every Tuesday. We really appreciate all of your interactions, your listens, your ear tubes that pick up our sound vibrations and they go into your brain and you register it as an amazing podcast or a stupid podcast. All right, so thank you so much for joining us on This Podcast is Lava. Be sure to follow us on Instagram. Uh, this podcast is lava. Um, you can email us at this podcast is lava at gmail.com if you have questions, concerns, <laughs> or if you want to be on the podcast, check us out on iTunes. Be sure to rate us there and uh, leave a review. Podbean, Google Play, and we're working on getting on Spotify and YouTube. Be sure to give us a, scri- a subscribe. Tickle that subscribe yeah. button. <laughs> and uh, have a lovely day, morning, noon, or night. Peace out. Bye now. Hasta luego. Remember to tip your waitresses. Love you all.